Okay, we're going to start working on the frills for the petticoat in a moment, but before we do that, I'm sure many of you have seen the uh, Daily Mail's uh, online article for the Cinderella dress, which has been quite helpful for making this. And this particular picture shows uh, one of the dance doubles. So I just printed these off, could they help? When we were studying this petticoat over the hoop, I don't know if you can see it on this camcorder, but they've actually done some sewing lines, if you can just follow my finger. And there's another one there, and we think there's another one in between, but it seems to disappear. And then here, we can actually see some very large zigzag lines which would make sense for the markings and placements possibly of the frills well that's what we're guessing anyway so we're gonna go with that and this one here shows the uh, go days we're going to call them now usually a go day is an infill piece on a skirt but we don't know what else to call them so we'll call them uh, triangle go days that have just been literally by the looks of it we think they're just sewn onto the outside of this petticoat and also on this particular photo if you have a, a program like Adobe Photoshop or a program where you can lighten and darken the images you can pick this out a bit more but there are more triangle sections if you just follow my finger more triangle sections underneath this outer layer of skirt whatever they've used so it's obviously something very see-through because you can just see more triangle sections underneath but you would probably need to find that photo online and blow it up yourself to have a look and we can just see here some now we don't know if this is entirely different petticoat or what but we can just see them building up a layer of holographic um, go days here but all we can really do is just guess from these photographs how to go by it so okay on the bottom of my cage I'm creating a dust ruffle which is going to be removable and I'm just going to attach it on with poppers and I thought the convenient points would be where the straps are so I just basically got a long rectangle piece of fabric, 13, mine was 13 inches wide from the top there to about an inch half, two inches off the bottom. And I just did a very light ruffle across the top. And I said this is going to be detachable so I can put it in the wash if I need to. I'm going to go on more about the ruffling device in a bit when I start the ruffles for the petticoat so that will be coming up next okay as you can see I've sewn one of the poppers on now and um, just make sure you get them the right way when you sew them on and all that will happen is that just pops onto there and snaps on and I'll do that at all the points going all the way around and that way it can just be easy just to take off and then pop into the wash make sure you use something like a polyester I'm using this uh, ivory coloured organza which I already put through the overlocker earlier to do the edges uh, so you want something that can easily be washed To make the petticoat you will first of all have had to have made your crinoline cage so get that done first and I'm just going to show you how to get the measurements for the petticoat which will be the layer that is used where all the frills go on. These are all Tracy's measurements so you have to change them according to your own. First of all get the waist measurement and then add three centimeters to get a final number 
and then you'll need to take a measurement from the front of the cage to about five centimeters off the floor get a side measurement and then get a back measurement and then we need to measure your cage going from about the halfway point you will of course have more on the back than you do on the front because it's an elliptical cage so measure your halfway distance and add 10 centimeters and the same for the back and add 10 centimeters so when you come to cutting it out the front piece will be on a fold so having taken your waist measurement we're now going to halve that measurement and then halve it again so place it on a fold and my waist measurement will be 16.5 and the front is 104 and the bottom will be 80 so going on to the back piece same waist measurement the back will be 114 and the bottom will be 130 when you're putting all these pieces together this is the center back remember to leave a gap of about 20 centimeters at the top so you can get in and out okay we've decided to do a first layer of frills about five and a half inches up from the bottom so we're just marking with a chalk pen five and a half inches we're doing that all the way around okay we've been busy doing our marks for our frills and we're now marking where we want this uh, holographic layer to go and we've decided to go for this ring up so that's one, two three fourth ring up and we've been putting little blue marks we're using the tapes as points to where we want the uh, top of the uh, Godet's triangles to meet up so we're putting points there and then we've been putting a mark about halfway between that point and that point and then moving around do the same again we've put another mark just see it there just the blue one and then a mark halfway down on the petticoat between the two so then you'll sort of get this sort of effect going all the way around okay we're now measuring the first line for the go days and um, we're doing a better measurement we're just getting our distance between the dots then we're taking a ruler and just marking the lines out for the general uh, zigzag uh, pattern Okay, we've now marked, and again, I don't know how this is going to show up on the camcorder, but I'll do my very best. We've got our two lines, we've got our first zigzag line here, we've then got our second zigzag line here, and uh, we've done that particular one halfway point, so we're using this ring here. Uh, as the halfway. Okay, I'm going to start on my ruffles and colouring now. I'm doing the bottom row of ruffles and I've cut these 8 inch wide strips of fabric in white or uh, silk organza. Um, I've got my colours here and I've got baby blue there. Uh, turquoise there, 
um, right look and what I'm going to do is just dunk them in the various colours so I get a bit of turquoise, a bit of blue, a bit of lilac and then I have a clove sauce here and make sure you protect the floor or your parents will go crazy <laughs> and then I'll just use this just to drape them over basically I've got my three colours here I've got a baby blue or china blue a lilac and some turquoise and I'll just show you the dyes that I use uh, for the blue I used uh, this Daiwan China Blue and the turquoise I um, invested in some uh, dye from Dharma Trading if that's how you pronounce it this is a acid dye and requires um, hot water and white vinegar so you do that one a little bit differently to the diamond ones which are cold water um, I recommend only a tiny few grains on the edge of a teaspoon when you put this in if you put a teaspoon in your colour will be so intense but I mean that's okay if you want your colour to be really bright but I need mine to be quite pale so I put, literally put the edge of a teaspoon amount in and watered it down a lot and then with these, I find with these Dialong cold water dyes, this is a very old one now, um, you have to put a lot more dye in to get the colour to come through on these ones, but the acid dyes you do not need a lot of dye at all for it to take. But as I had these lying around I thought I may as well make use of them. Okay, I'm actually going to be using a variety of um, organzas for my frills. But this white silk organza, um, which is a bit more expensive to buy, I, this is the one that I coloured turquoise, blue and lilacs. Um, this is what it was called. And this is the seller I bought it from if you wish to purchase some and this is on eBay. You see it was a bit pricey at $6.50 a yard. I also purchased this very nice uh, periwinkle blue it was called from the same seller. You know it's quite a nice blue. There you go, you can see blue a bit better here. I also got from the Fancy Silk Store in Birmingham this very, very pale, uh, light, I can call it lilac, but I don't honestly know what to call it. Um, it's in Silk Organza again, so I got just two yards of that. I say it's a bit pricey to buy and it was a bit more at the Fancy Silk Store than online. And then here I have a, a synthetic polyester um, organza. So you can, I don't know if you can see, but it has more of a shine on it because it's a man-made fabric. I'm going to use a mixture of polyester and the silk organza because the silk organza is really expensive and it doesn't come very wide either. And I can't really budget to make all my frills out of the silk organza, so I'm using a mixture of uh, synthetics. I mean, the only difference really is the silk organza is a bit stiffer and it's slightly lighter. So that's the only difference. The organ uh, my made organza is a bit softer, but just very slightly heavier. Okay, this is one great big long strip I dyed earlier. You can just see the turquoise and the blue. Goes on and on a bit. I'll have to do a final measurement in a bit. <laughs> Okay, as you can see here, I've got all my strips cut. Um, remember I wanted the finish width to be around 7 inches, so I cut them to 8 inches wide because I've now run them through the overlocker machine to give that overlocked edge. Obviously, if it's got a salvage edge on the end, you don't need to overlock that, you can just leave it. 
but for those strips that don't I've overlocked across the top and the bottom of course by the time you've overlocked you've lost a bit more of the width and then when you come to ruffle it in a moment we lose even more but here I've got all my colours I've got my turquoise blues pale lilacs pale purples all kinds of colours look really pretty at the moment I'm quite pleased with those Okay, we're now going to start doing our ruffles and I've decided to use one of these ruffling devices and we've got, this is actually a spare, but we've got one set up here on the machine. This is the old Singer machine because uh, we found the device didn't work very well on the plastic machine. Okay, uh, you have four settings on the top and we're going to use the setting on the far right which is a consistent gather uh, the other holes are for pleating and for doing different spaces of pleating then you have a wind down screw and that is wound down right to the bottom for this setting and then if I go across to my stitch length this is set to about 8 stitches to the inch. OK, we'll now demonstrate how this is uh, put together. If you just look down on your ruffler foot at the front here, you've got a little finger sticking out. And your material has got to go over the first two, underneath the finger, and then it's got to be pressed between this blue steel. And Tracy will just show you how to do that. bit fiddly. So just underneath the finger and then you force the rest of the material backwards and underneath the blue steel finger like so. Put the foot down and hopefully it should ruffle. It doesn't do right. anything. We have now sewn on the first ruff ruffle and that is approximately 18 centimeters but you don't have to be too accurate with that and Tracy is just going to demonstrate it now Okay, I'm now working on the second lot of ruffles um, at the skirt and I cut strips that were 10 inches, 10 inches wide and now I've overlapped the edges. I was aiming to finish at about 9 inches wide which is, needs to be my finish length so it's worked out okay. And then in a moment I'm going to be ruffling the whole lot all over again, the same as before. Okay, I've now sewn on the um, frill that's uh, now 9 inches wide from there to the bottom where my finger is now. As you can see this has gone just a couple of inches higher up than the Sorry, the first two ruffles that I did. Those were the uh, seven inch finished ones. I decided to now to keep this as just one layer. Um, well, I might put another one on later, I don't know yet. first level of godets that we're going to do are uh, iridescent organza material and they're basically triangles. Each side, these two sides here are 30 centimeters and then you just cut a curve. 
when you cut these out you've got to make sure that the straight grain goes straight down from the middle and I've cut 13 of these all together to fit Tracy's petticoat okay next you have to sew on your ruffle onto the bottoms of your godets before you sew these edges onto your petticoat when you're happy with the length of your godet and your frill there we go what we're going to do now is secure the top of each one with a pin and down the sides and down the bottom because what we're going to do now is to sew this on to the foundation petticoat all the way around. <laughs> 